Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to cover off a topic, reference a question I was asked in one of my previous videos. It boils down to how do I get the smooth track IR settings that I have. So I'll cover that topic now with you. I am not going to run into great detail about how to set track IR up. There are plenty of videos out there showing that. I'll just show you my setup and we'll take it from there. So let's get started. Okay, here's my Track IR setup now on the screen. So I use the Track Clip Pro, the speed I set to 0.4, and the smoothness to 50. So this is my yaw setting, my pitch setting, roll, X, Y, and Z. Now you can pause the video if you wish, but what I will do is I'll provide a link to my actual profile. It's called My DCS. Now the 0.4 speed setting. Obviously I've been tuning this for years to get it to be exactly what I prefer, to be fair. Now 0.4 does mean that you have to move your head um, a little bit more during a mission, but the smoothness and for want of a better phrase, the realism uh, is to my benefit, so that's the way I like it. Let me show you that working in a mission now. So here I am in the cockpit, and we can now check out the movement. So to the left, to the right, rotate, rotate. And you'll also notice that my head does not pop out of the canopy. Now a lot of people complain about that, but that's down to your track IR settings and potentially linked to your FOV settings. So I can zoom in. I can zoom out. I can look down. I can zoom in into the cockpit and have a look at the dials. I can also look round to the back, I can also look round to the back to the left, I can also shrink myself down, I can increase my height. Now you'll also notice that I can increase the zoom with buttons that I've assigned to the actual joystick. So let's have a look at those bombers out there. There we go. And then I can zoom out. And you'll also notice that it zooms out to a fixed position. Usually when you zoom out with the normal settings, you will zoom out to a fish eye view, which I can't stand because everything becomes distorted. I prefer a more realistic view. And the fisheye is not for me. It suits many other people, but that's their choice. So now I've shown you it working in the cockpit. I'll show you then how I set up my field of view, my FOVs. So let's go there now. So let's take a look at my FOV field of view setup. Now, it's a well-known fact that every single module within DCS has its own view folder. The problem being that if you make changes in there, then it will not pass the integrity check. So what I do is I have my Save Games DCS Open Beta config folder, and inside that is a view folder. So let's go back. So you'll have a view folder like this. So go into there, and these are the two that I actually make changes to. Now here's the caveat, and here's the warning. If you're not used to messing with the Lua, then don't play with it. Try and use somebody else's Lua files. If you're going to play with it, then I would have suggested that you copy and save the original files. That way, 
you don't have to struggle trying to get it back to normal. So let's have a look at my server file. Let's go into the Lua. As you can see, I've commented bits and pieces out historically because I've tried different settings to try and find the best method for me and best suited. So what I have here is this primary line basically is what limits the amount of zoom out to get rid of that fisheye effect. So I have mine set to 20 and 95. Originally, if you look at this when you look in your own folder, this will be around about the 140 mark. It also contains the various view settings for all the different types of aircraft that I've set up. Again, you can play with these if you wish, but again, if you don't have the experience, don't mess with it. Um, it's very difficult to get your views back to normal if you're not fully aware of what you're doing. So anyway, I make all the relevant changes in here that I prefer, that give me the views that I like. Once again, what I will do is I will provide a link so that you can download this and utilize it yourself if you wish. It doesn't cover every aircraft within DCS, but it covers the vast majority. So that's the server file. You can also amend the snap views file and make relevant changes to the view angles where you see fit. Now, I've obviously changed all of mine um, to suit me. Again, I'll leave a link to it. That's what creates all the FOV views within DCS. And because it's saved within the saved games folder, it doesn't have an impact on the integrity check. So that's the FOV view settings explained, where they're located and how to change them. Well, I hope that suitably answers the question that was raised. And I hope you enjoyed the video. More to the point, I hope you find the profile and the lure files useful if you decide to go ahead and use them. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Take care now.